about cities, the first thing we need to do is talk about the origins of the city. The history of the city goes back to the original city-states, those places that were located within walls for protection. Cities had their original uh, hearth found in the Fertile Crescent, the Nile River Valley, and the Indus River Valley, places where we saw agriculture take root early on. Now, city-states were profitable, and that's why they were attacked often. They had the wealth and the resources that others wanted. So that's why the wall was very important around these original cities. It also became the center point of the empire, which is where we start seeing the city be such an important focus. So the next thing we're gonna take a look at is the urban pattern of a city. And the first thing we wanna do is define what a city really is. It's a self-governing unit, also called a municipality, that has fixed boundaries and usually their own elected officials or people in charge. No matter where you go around the world, you'll typically see cities making their own decisions separate from other parts of the country. Cities in America were once the cornerstone of the United States, but in the 1950s, we started to see suburbs evolve and become more important. Now that area, the city and the suburbs, is called the urban area. So the urban area is the city, including all the suburbs around it. The next topic we're going to look at is the metropolitan area. This is the city and surrounding areas that depend on that main city for its functions. So we're basically talking about smaller communities and towns that are around a major city. In the case of Orlando, Orlando has about 277,000 in the actual city. But when we look at its metropolitan area, we're looking at 2.3 million. So when we look at the map of Orlando right here, we can also see something called the Metropolitan Statistical Area. And again, that's the metropolitan area. That is the city of Orlando, and then its surrounding communities and towns around it. So when we're talking about urban areas, we need to focus in on the downtown, especially the CBD or the Central Business District. This is usually a very small, compact area within the downtown, about 1% of the land, where services and businesses are really focused at. Many of these businesses feed off of each other, so it might be a photocopy service for businesses to make copies with, maybe an office supply store. You're going to see law offices there because that's usually where the court system is located, but it's businesses feeding off of each other. We also note that CBDs usually are in the middle so that they're equal distance for their workers and their customers. That way they don't lose any part of the urban area around them. Now retail in a CBD has two parts to it. You've got your high threshold and high range. High range generally are businesses that will attract from a far distance because they're providing something unique. A very high end specialty jewelry store could be an example of a high range business. We also have high threshold. High threshold means it needs a lot of people to be able to stay in business. So a symphony orchestra, a sports team, maybe an insurance company, a banking system, they'll be in the CBD because they need so many people to be able to stay in business. They need that whole metropolitan range. The last thing we're gonna examine is the competition for space in a CBD or deep downtown area. Land is very expensive in a downtown area. There's a lot of demand for it. So that's why you gotta build vertical, you gotta build up. That's why you have skyscrapers and high rises in downtown areas. It's also why we see little manufacturing. Because when you're building cars or heavy machinery or something large, you wanna build, you wanna build horizontal, you wanna build outward because you don't wanna have to move something heavy from a very tall space. So we typically just see businesses in a downtown area. There's generally few residences because of crime and the cost and pollution. Although we're starting to see that change. We're starting to see people move back to downtowns because of traffic problems. Also, we see a lot of mixed use in a downtown area. When we look at a skyscraper, the bottom floors generally are like restaurants and shops. The middle will be businesses and the top will be residences. Again, it's kind of like getting more bang for your buck. You're trying to fit in a lot into a smaller area. 